Today is Wednesday, May 4th, 2005, and this is the beginning of an interview with Francis Kuntz at his home at 181 Penn Avenue in Portage, Pennsylvania. Mr. Kuntz is 81 years old, having been born on April 11th, 1924. My name is Alyssa Seitar, and I'll be the interviewer. My name is Ashley Coslo, and I will also be the interviewer. Francis Kuntz is my mother's father and also my grandfather. Could you state for the recording what war and branch of the service you served in? The Army. What war? World War II. What was your rank? Corporal. Where did you serve? European Theater. Where was your place of birth? Benscrick. Benscrick, so which is now considered Lily, Pennsylvania. How long did you serve? 32 months. Total? All service? Um, what were some of your duties during the war? What did you have to do? Half track driver and radio operator. Did you volunteer or were you drafted into I the war? I was drafted. Um, how, how old were you when you joined the military? Nineteen. What were your remembrances of boot camp? Did you go? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, everything was rough. What were some of the activities you had to do there? Oh, what was that? Some of the activities you had to do there, like training-wise? Well, yeah. bivouac out in the desert, learn to fire the guns, Whatever, learn to drive the half track. Early wake up call? Every morning, early. Um, so, briefly describe for me some of the military food. Did you eat spam or SOS at all? Yeah, plenty of it. Did you like it? When you're hungry, everything tastes good. What did you like and dislike about the food in general? Um, it wasn't anything that I really liked. Nothing special at all? No desserts or just regular meals? Nothing in general? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing was really good, you know. But when you ate whatever you got because you couldn't go to the refrigerator and get something. Um, did you get any character building duties like KP, mess hall, guard duty, etc.? All of it. What do you remember about them? Some were rough, especially down in Texas in sandstorms. What do you remember about your officers? Is there a special officer you remember? Yeah, Lieutenant Ward. What was he like? Was he really mean? Or no, he strict? was a good officer. Good officer. Um, what regulations were fresh, frustrating in the service? Were you allowed, like, off base at all at any certain time? Or? We used to go to uh, Juarez, across the border in Old Mexico, on leave, on leave. What was that, just the city, or? It was a big city, Old Mexico. What did you like Where they had the bullfights. Did you watch a bunch of those? I didn't watch the bullfights, but we let them, ate a lot of bull meat. <laughs> <laughs> did you go anywhere else while you were there? Not in Texas, no. What were like some of the things when you did go off base? Did you go to like any dance halls? Or? I went to uh, bowling, and uh, they had a little diner there. We used to go to the diner and eat because that food was better than farm <laughs> food. So did you try to go there often? I take it get to the restaurant as often well, as possible. Every so often, they you could only get a pass every so often, not every day. Mm -hmm. Who was the most unforgettable character that you met in the service? My sergeant. Why? <laughs> he was slow, and uh, he was always late coming out for roll call. What was his name? Uh, sergeant Levy, Morton Levy from St. Louis. His dad 
run an exterminating company. Um, what were your opinions of the equipment, the clothing, the rations, and the training of the military? Well, we did what we had to do. We wear what we could give them. Did sizes usually fit you, or were they like too big or too small? No, usually they were. You could exchange them if they were too big. Was equipment kind of limited to as to what you could get? Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, what we like, could pick? Um, did you have like the best of the best as much as you needed, or was there just only so much? Oh, that? we had enough. What about rations? Any good? The what? Rations. Rations. No, they were worse than anything else, I guess. But. Um, what part of the world did you like best in your military experience? Did I what? What part of the world did you like best in your military experience? Like where you went to? Where did I go? In my military? Overseas? Or in England? Any specific place you liked best there? Well, you didn't like anything there, but uh, Australia was the nicest. I'm not Australia, Austria was the nicest country. Did you get to go anywhere special there that you remember? No, just wherever the army was going, you went. You... Did you like the scenery or? The scenery was nice, the mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, was this your first time away from home? No. You've been like away far other countries before? In Ohio, before? Cleveland, I worked there before this. What did you miss most about the United States? Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone special back home at that time? Did I what? Anyone special back home at that time? Just family? Or? Family, yeah. Did you take part in any combat action? Five battles. Um, where at and when? Uh, with the Germans in Normandy, northern France, central Europe, Rhineland, and the Ardennes. The Ardennes was the last one up at the Battle of the Bulge. So you were in the Battle of the Bulge? Yes. Wasn't that the bloodiest? One of the bloodiest? Yeah, the most casualties. How did you and your comrades regard enemy troops as fighters? Were you against them? They were all good fighters. We were a little better, that's all. <laughs> or maybe we had more. Did you have any nicknames for them? Like for Japanese? Kraut. For Germans? For the Germans. Did you fight Japanese? No. Um, can you describe your baptism of fire and your reaction to that experience? Well, you, you're, you're not scared when the f you're in the battle and it's fire and it's after it's all over is when you get the shakes. <laughs> just kind of a big shock as yeah. to, wow, you're, what just happened? Concentrating on the fire and everything, you don't, you worry, but it doesn't bother you until after it's all over and then. Um, if you or your close friends were ever wounded in action, please recount the circumstances. I wasn't wounded, but I had friends that were wounded. Were they shot or? Shot. From, uh, they were Germans in a boxcar once, and we was going up the road, and they opened fire on us. And, uh, well, we had a lieutenant that was killed, and a few wounded soldiers. What impact did the USO have on your military service? What do you mean? What impact? Yeah, did yeah. it have an impact on it or? Did the USO succeed in keeping your, keeping up your morale? When we could get to see them or anything, yeah. Um, did you see any famous people that you saw at USO shows? Bob Hope. What were some of the shows that you saw? Well, we just, they would come out and sing. There was no movie or anything. It was just uh, like a stage show or whatever. Kind of like a music concert yeah. usually or dancing? Yeah. No dance. Well, they would, whatever. They, they didn't do too much dancing, mostly singing and comedy. Did you ever use V-mail? Yes. Um, how was V-mail used? Well, you wrote a letter and they would... Uh, just take a picture of it, that's all, and send it home. 
Was any of your mail ever censored? Overseas, all of it. Um, was it censored because you said where you were? Or? They didn't want the family to know where we were, or I guess. Um, did you receive a lot of mail while overseas, or? Good bit. From who? Hmm? From who? From who did you receive From mail? Here. Yeah, like family. Yeah, parents? family, mostly family. Um, what was your immediate reaction to being discharged? Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Excited to get back home, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you participate in any welcome home celebration? No. Did they have any in the area, or? Well, maybe months or years later they'd have something, but nothing right after the war. They did in places, you know. Did your family have a party for you? No. They all greeted me when I came home, though. I was a king for... They didn't even know I was coming home until I walked in the door. Have you maintained contact with anybody in your unit? Not ever. Well, we have, our outfit has a reunion every year. And uh, what, about every five years I get to go to one of them and see some of the friends. And there's a lot of friends living around here in Portage, too. About how many do you usually attend the, pretty much the celebrations? Well, started out there was hundreds, now there sits down about 50. We're getting old and some of them aren't around anymore. How did the government reward veterans for their service in the war? Did you get anything or besides like medals, did you get anything else? No, or? I got medals. Well, I'm not, those were the medals I earned during the war, but I mean, uh, they only gave you what, I think, $400, what they called muster and out pay, like a... What medals did you receive from the war? What, what? what medals did you receive from the war? Uh, good conduct medal, president citation, uh, battle stars, well, I got the silver battle stars. Uh, victory medal, sharpshooters medal. Um, do you think that the government did enough to reward you for fighting? Well, I think so. There was a lot of people in the service and they couldn't give everybody a thousand dollars or so. Did you take, like, any souvenirs, like, when you were at a certain place? Did you get anything special and send it home? Or even just keep no, for I, yourself? I brought some of it home. I got pistol. and I have a flag, German flag, with a big swastika on it. And a lot of Jap er, German medals. I have coins from all over the world, I think. German coins and occupation money. And, uh, and, uh, I don't know what else they got. Do you still have your uniform? Mm -hmm. Every part of it, pretty much? No, I don't have the trousers. Uh -huh. Does the jacket still fit? You've seen it. <laughs> Do you remember any certain experience while being in the war stuck out in your head that you remember really clearly? Oh, boy. Yes, when they, uh, the planes took off on D-Day from England, we were in England, guarding an airfield, and it was a real bright moonlit night. And we was watching, uh, we were guarding the airfields and watched them all go over, the paratroopers. And they, when they come back, we look through a lot of the planes that were shot up. And bloody planes. What did the planes look like? 
Like what colors like were they painted? <laughs> they're big uh, C-47s, what they call C-47 or something else, I don't know what. They were just open planes where they called cargo in them, they had the men in there, and when they got over Germany, they jumped out and the planes came back. Do you remember anything from Battle of the Bulge? It was cold and miserable. Then I guess we were lucky we didn't get too much action, because we were more or less guarding airplanes, or stopping the airplanes from coming in. And, uh, they didn't much have much left of the, their air force, so we were lucky in that part. Were there any major battles where, like, people around you were getting shot or you were being shot at? Well, we were getting shot at, but when we were at the Bulge, I don't remember anybody of ours getting killed there. You know, Anywhere else? Wounded. Anywhere else? Well, there was a lot of places we got wounded. In fact, two officers got killed in a town in France. We were cut off for three days in, in a town by the Germans. And the, Three officers were wounded. They were taking them out in an ambulance, and the ant. Well, they later found the ambulance with the officers shot. They killed the officers that were wounded. Were you pretty much stuck there for three days, and you couldn't really go anywhere? Or? No, in a foxhole. <laughs> Were rations getting low, or did you need supplies when you were there? Need some what? Some salad? Supplies. Did you need supplies or rations when you were there? Because you were stuck for three days. Yeah. Well, we didn't eat much. I don't think I ate for three days. Just had water. Did you ever get, then, did you get enough sleep then? Could you ever sleep when you were like, there? Oh, I don't remember. There? You, you don't sleep, remember? you take cat naps, that's about all. But, uh, it was raining and uh, they couldn't get the planes in to open up the road for us to get out of there. And it was on November the 11th, Armistice Day, that the planes quit raining and the planes come in and opened up the roads and we get out of there. It wasn't fun. <laughs> I'll show you that flag, you want to see it? Pause the tape to show artifacts that he got from the war. And that's where I used to drive. What is this a? What, is this a tank? Half track. Half track. Yeah, it has tracks on the back and wheels on the front. What kind of guns are on the? 450 caliber. It was on a turret, and it, you had a little motor on there, and it, it turned around and raised up and down. We had the record for planes shot down in the European theater on our outfit, 126 planes. Wow, 126. 126 planes. And who's this with you in this picture? I don't remember his name. But he was a fellow... No. Here's, uh, well, that's a Mograk, and that's a Lesko. Live used to live, which one's that? Oh, the one here. He used to live, you know where Lesko's living right? Mm -hmm. That's where he used to live. He was in the Army for service with me. Wow. Well, thank you very much for letting us interview you yes. and for showing us the pictures and your mm. German flag that you got. And this concludes the interview with Francis Kuntz on 5405.